Now I know this one might be a sticky issue for some people, but I think it's worth talking about. And that's the state of higher education in the UK, particularly in the arts. It's common knowledge just how bad it's been with series of strikes after strikes, workloads going up and up, uh, real terms pay going down and down. But this is all across all the public sectors, but particularly grim for those wanting to maybe study art at university in some format. And obviously my special is photography. I did study a photography degree in 2000. <clears throat> I did go on to study an MA in photography and I have taught in various universities for over, I don't know man, like 15 years, right? So I'm kind of experienced in this matter and I thought I'd just make a little video to kind of talk about some realities about studying photography at university and also about possible options of what you might want to do instead, okay? And this is tied into so many things, but the big overall thing, as with most of these things, is money. And it's the marketization of the higher education sector. Now, obviously there's been loads of strikes going on for a few years now, with uh, lots of academics striking across the university sector and here in the UK. And, and the main reason is, is that the universities just won't pay them. And there's been lots of pushback. You'll hear on the news common things will be like saying, oh, this, uh, these academics, they're on 50, 60,000 pounds a year. Well, yeah, if an academic was on five days a week, which is what they call a one in the uni biz, but most academics aren't on five days a week. Most academics are maybe on one, two or three days a week. And the more days they're at university, the more workload they have and the crazier it gets, okay? And it's pretty grim. So one of the things is that universities do have loads and reserves, okay? They could just pay the striking staff like the whole time this has been going on, but they just won't. And like in reserve, what do they have? Billions. They have billions of pounds in reserves and could just settle it like that. I mean, I won't go into too much detail, but I'll write it in the text, but there's just like a myriad of universities hit by cuts across the UK. And mainly what do they always do? They lay people off. So they'll like just, you know, close whole courses and that way they can just fire everyone or they'll basically, and they love doing this, they expand the role, they get rid of the role people are doing and make them reapply for this new job, but with like three times the workload. Okay. It's just, it's terrible. And that's the really sad fact is, is like, there are some great teachers out there who've just about held on at universities. Right. And like, you've got to ask yourselves, like, why are they still in it? It's that bad, why are they in it? If they hadn't out, surely they would take it, okay? I think, you know, studying an MA like I did in 2007, it was quite incredible to be on this course and every single week have an amazing different visiting lecturer come in as well as the course staff who were teaching you. Every week, right? I know of loads of MAs in photography up and down the country. You get one tutor who's running the show and like no visiting lecturers like we're a couple, like that's it. I mean, it's pretty dire, right? I mean, there's, there's, you know, you've got to think also about where is the money going? Now, I, I remember seeing something online, I'll have to find the stats and put it in the comments, but essentially the rate of administ administration staff at university has just gone crazy. It's just absolutely ballooned. This isn't a, like a little article I found online and it was saying how in recent years, Yale has achieved the unfortunate distinction of having more administrators and managers than undergraduate students, like BA students. For its fewer than 5,000 undergraduate students, Yale proudly employs an army of over 5,460 administrators. Crazy. And there was another one I found, I can't remember, I'll have to, again, I'll, I'll write it, I'll write it in the comments. But yeah, this is one of the things, right? Like, you know, speaking as someone now who teaches kind of like one day a week at a very independent school, like essentially teaching an MA, it's not accredited, it's just a year postgraduate course. There's very like streamlined management. Like there's not really much that goes on. Like the, the students are mostly mature students. They know when to come in, there's a room, we teach, that's it. So all these universities, man, it's just this amazing culture of management and administration, which seems to gobble up all the money and don't even get started on the vice chancellors. So if you don't know about this, the vice chancellors, the people who are like the presidents, the CEOs of the universities, and they're on crazy money. They'll be on like 300, 400, 500,000 pounds a year, plus benefits, plus expenses, plus all kinds of mad stuff. And when they do finally go after messing up the university, they'll all go off with a golden handshake. It's criminal, okay? It's absolutely criminal. And like, 
let's say they're on 300,000, like most of the people teaching, the academics, they're probably only on like maybe 18,000, maybe 22,000 pounds a year. You think how many more staff you could hire to actually teach rather than paying that person that insane amount of money. Money, that's it. That's the bottom line. And obviously it's really tragic, but there's this thing I was told a few years ago how in the arts in particular, imagine you're a student and you're studying something creative, let's say photography. You will graduate and maybe you go off and try and make a go of it. You're going to try and freelance in the real world. Maybe there's something you can do, some skill set you have. You're maybe going to be a portrait photographer and off you go. Now, the students who are super fine art and super conceptual generally don't even bother doing that because they know there's no way they're going to earn a living. So straight away they dive right back into the university, right back into the gates, and they get their foot in the ground floor really young. And this is why up and down the country you'll see like people with PhDs in their like mid-twenties and late-twenties teaching on university courses who literally have just zero experience outside of the enclave of the university. Which some people be like, yeah, that's great, Ed, they know the system, but that's all they know. And like, what are they going to do? Teach other students how to be photography tutors, to teach other people how to be, you know, and it's just, again, I don't think that's why a lot of people are going to study photography, right? They want to study photography to be great photographers. Isn't that the game? Isn't that the dream? And I think that's also the really hard pill to swallow is a lot of people will go through that process, those three years at university for masses of money, and they expect like a job at the end of it. And you know, in the world of photography, man, that, that's it. Your best chance is freelancing. And hopefully you've been taught by people who can give you the skills you're gonna to need to survive freelancing in the real world. And how can you when you're being taught by some dude who's like in his late 20s, who's never even worked as a photographer? It's crazy, isn't it? Really crazy. So yeah, I was just looking up costings online at the moment. So get your head around this. The UK has the most indebted graduates in the world. Over 90% of UK graduates take out a loan, accumulating an average debt of around £45,600, okay? And the UK government contributes the least to a student's education of any OECD country. Okay, I'm just looking at some stats here, right? Let's say you wanted to do an MA in photography in London. I've just arbitrarily picked university. The home fee for that MA that one year is £13,330, right? And if you're an international student, that's 28,570. Yeah. If you wanted to do a BA in London, <clears throat> again, 9,250 a year, 27,700 for home students. And if you're international, man, in total for the three years, that's 86,250 pounds. It's so much money. And that's a tragedy for something in the arts where the likelihood of you actually earning a living from that it's really infinitesimal. And I know there'll be all the stats from university saying, oh, look, all of our students are in employment. Well, they are employment. They're still stacking shelves of ice and like they were doing when they were students. But you take that off as them being gainfully employed. Crazy. So what's the answer? You can still do it, of course. I mean, I did it. I did my BA and it was OK. It wasn't great. The MA I did was fantastic, but are MAs even like that anymore? So look, if you have studied a course recently, write in the comments, I wanna hear from you, okay? If you've studied a BA in the UK or an MA in the UK, I really wanna hear what you have to say, okay? So options, let's think about other things. What could you do instead, all right? Well, firstly, off the bat, you know, you could just study another degree in another discipline that might more lead to kind of just a regular job and you can still do great photography and you can teach like kind of learn that on your on your own time and, and do other things and that's a safer bet if you still want to do it you can do mentoring I've, i looked it up briefly online i'll write some stuff in the text below this video but there's loads of amazing photographers out there who you can just have mentoring sessions with <coughs> including me <coughs> But like other people as well, there's like gallerists and curators and people who've worked, all kinds of people in the industry that you can just pay and just have like a one-to-one -one online tutorial with, okay? As well as loads of other myriad courses you can do, right? For not huge amounts of money here, all right? But if you think about how much a degree is gonna cost you, it's cost 27,000 pounds. You know what? I bet I could put a pretty amazing program of independent like tutorials with amazing mentors for like, pff, 1500 quid and you probably talk to like eight nine people obviously you know youtube you're looking at it now youtube's a great resource like if you want to learn photography there's lots of technical stuff where people are going through like theories and things you can think about as well as like loads of technical stuff so if you're not sure what camera to get dude 
whenever I'm checking out a camera, like I want to buy a film camera right now, I'm looking at loads of people reviewing them on YouTube, sort of just feeling them out, okay? There's obviously channels like this where I'm trying to help you, particularly thinking about projects and crowdfunding and self-publishing, but there's loads of other great people you could be checking out, and again, I'll write some of those people in the text below. And again, I mentioned it earlier, I'm teaching at a really cool liberal independence art school in Margate called the Margate School. The new year starts in October. And essentially, it is a, it's, it's, not a, it's a postgraduate course, but it's not really accredited. You don't get a piece of paper at the end. But like, you know, anyone, by the way, if anyone's watching this who has done a degree on, or an MA and their piece of paper saying like first on has ever helped them to get anything apart from teaching work, I'm intrigued to know. And that's the bitter pill here is, is that the reason you're studying a degree or you're doing an MA is not for that piece of paper, hopefully. You're doing it to get really good. And then you produce something called, wait for it, a portfolio and maybe an amazing project or maybe a book. And that's that's your entree to the world. OK, and that's what people are going to hire you for. I, I don't you know, again, if you've been hired because you showed someone your graduation, like your, your degree certificate, being like, oh yeah, I did a degree, and you didn't show them any photos, again, please write in the comments, all right? But generally, that's not happening, okay? Anyway, it's a one-year course, it's photography and film, and I think at the moment, for the whole year's tuition, it's like 4,000 pounds. When you consider like an MA is like nearly 14,000 pounds, again, and I'm sure there are other courses like this up and down the country. So again, if you can think of any other independent schools who offer postgraduate courses, not necessarily master's degrees, but courses, please write in the comments. And maybe between us all, we can kind of aggregate a whole list of different things and different options where you can basically learn photography without necessarily having to go to university and get in crazy amounts of debt. There you go. This should be an interesting one, right? What do you reckon? Anyway, thank you.